What's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will from the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel. We got a quick news article for you today. I have been very interested if you watch the channel on the rovers going to Mars. We've got uh, Europe sending a rover and we also have a new satellite being sent up from India because you know me, you like my channel, I look for anomalies and I'm looking them from any government in the world that wants to give me pictures. High resolution, stuff like that, um, especially other countries because we get the United States stuff and there's so many things that get blurred out in a lot of these uh, things that get moved around there's questions about some of the authenticity of some of it so just to get some other stuff it's always I love to see what they image what they find when they go so this one's been really interesting to me and what's pretty cool is that Europe's been testing this new rover out in Chile um, I always have I was probably saying the name of this and it was really all of these check out why it's going it always says the same thing um, Space scientists have conducted a trial run for the next mission to land the rover on the surface of Mars to search for water and signs of life. Well, check up here in this box over here or over here or somewhere on my screen. If you want to go check out some signs of water and life, I'm going to go ahead and link four, three or four videos there so you can see that we already know it's there. NASA knows it's there. And this is just kind of a ruse. We're going to keep sending these things back till we can finally say, okay, yeah. We found pyramids, we found this, we found uh, life, we found metal, we found all sorts of things, alloys. Um, and as our rovers start getting more and more sophisticated, we're going to be able to uh, do more missions out of them. But this is looks just like some of our uh, pictures from Mars, I must say. This is from the uh, Atacama Desert. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I always see that word in my, my brain. It's almost like I have dyslexia on, this brain, on that word for some reason. Um, but it's been testing. It's been back and forth to this desert to test it, and it, it did a couple of things. This uh, it, it wanted to test its drilling unit, some of the things. So I'm going to read a little bit of this. This is by Richard Gray, the science correspondent at the uh, Telegraph. So this is from the UK. Um, it's one of the most barren landscapes on the planet, a desert blasted by more radiation from the sun than almost anywhere else on the planet. We're talking about planet Earth right now. Yet, even here, there are signs of flowing water, rocks that have been smoothed by streams, and boulders that have been carried by those such flows. This is the Atacama Desert in North Chile, and is the closest environment on Earth to the conditions that are found on Mars. And this is kind of neat here, as you can see the rover, they're, they're, they're tinkering with it. And it's changed, see how it's changed? Look at the tires that they've changed it from here to here. These are the prototypes they're working with. Um, so they're still in that phase. This isn't supposed to launch until 2018, I believe. We'll double check that here. The ExoMars prototype, this one's called Bridget. If you go back a couple videos, I did one on Bridget, um, also on the Indians one. It, 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 they're both mixed in. They're the same one. Um, they're going through, testing it out, putting it through its paces. And uh, the European, here's what they're doing. Okay, the European Space Agency, or e, e, uh, ESA, as you see me abbreviate a lot, are conducting trials of a new rover in the desert that is due to be sent in 2018 to explore the surface of the red planet to search for water and signs of extraterrestrial life that may have existed there i love how they put that may have existed there like i said those links i'll put those links up one more time probably at the end or go to the description box well let's go back to my channel there's plenty there for you guys to see um exo mars as it is called will use sophisticated imaging to look for signs of left behind of flowing water it will analyze soil samples and drill more than three feet below the martian surface so this thing's going to be drilling deep um, in the first trial run of the rovers and instruments ahead of the mission scientists and engineers at astrium that's the company who's actually making it um, they've been conducting a series of tests in the Atacama desert so basically they're they're running these tests now see what they have to do um, a team of engineers based out of harwell near didicott in Oxfordshire controlled the rover remotely by sending its commands in a real-life simulation of a Mars mission so they actually weren't just there they actually set up this uh, see they actually set up the mission center here and uh, the controllers were required to work on a Martian time over the five-day test uh, downloading data and preparing new commands for a prototype of the rover to form and you know me my eyes go to anomalies and I don't know what's going on in this picture right here, but I I noticed this right away that this if this is a face or something right here, it was just very interesting. Let me see if I can get to pull up. See this? It looks like a face and two hands. I'm not really sure. It almost looks like somebody shape shifting or in the middle of a shape shift because the eyeballs. See how the eyeballs aren't even there? And that's just totally off. This this is behind this. Uh, you know, a bunch of people working. They look like you know, kids my age, you know, working on some of this stuff, probably are so excited just to be doing this, but 
That's how my eyes work in anomalies. I can't even get to a news article and not be pointed to that. Okay, hopefully that's not me being rude or something like that because, you know, somebody has a, a, an issue or something. But I thought that was kind of, uh, kind of weird. My eyes go to the anomalies. So you guys know me, my eyes do that, but let's read this a little bit more. The rover prototype itself, named Bridget, uses 3D imaging to map the surrounding and ground penetrating radar to probe the geology behind, beneath it. As an imager also studied the surface of the desert just as it will on Mars. So here's it, this video will just have it kind of running up a little bit. Um, he just kind of moves and moves. We, we watched this on the last one I did. Um, very slow, it's not there for speed, you know. And uh, one of the key components of this mission, or the mission that was missing, that still has to be delivered by the Mexican team who are building it, the drill. So they couldn't do the drill yet because they didn't have it yet. But instead, an engineer who accompanied the rover to the Atoma, <laughs> I swear, Atacama, I, I just cannot say that word. For some reason, my, my, if you, I don't know if you ever had words that your brain just can't say, that's one. So I'm just going to say desert from now on. It was forced to use a hand power drill to burrow down beneath the desert soil to simulate this part of the mission. So I guess that went okay with the hand drill. In another bizarre twist, however, engineers had to sweep away tracks left by the rover in the desert whose brushes to preserve the appearance of the site. So I guess they had to actually brush it away. I wonder why they have to clean it up. That's weird. Um, George Vago of ExoMars Project, scientist at the ESA, said this is the first time when science instruments and the rover body have come together to conduct pretty realistic field operations. The desert is probably the most Mars-like place that you can find on Earth. Um, it's very high up, more than 300, uh, more than 9,842 feet in altitude. So you're, you're way up there. And check it out. It's similar, pretty much, to that uh, to the Curiosity rover. Curiosity seems to be a little bit bigger, and uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be the exact same one that's going to go. But here we go. So you get a place that is very, very dry, but has a high dose of UV radiation. So you get an interesting chemistry. Some of the chemicals that are complicated for the life of the current rovers on Mars at the moment, you can find in the desert so basically this is a great place to go test it and see how it's going to work with your battery see how everything's going to work um, how your camera is going to work um, it has big boulders on the ground that have been carried by the water and ice for a long time we've caught the site of signs which was once clearly flowing water so they know that this desert has water and most here on earth have and i'm believing both on most on mars have had it as well so let's get into the nuts and bolts here um how much is this thing going to cost all right the 850 million ExoMars rover, and that's for Euro, um, itself is due to be launched in 2018 and will be landed on the planet's surface using a system similar to the Curiosity rover. It was lowered to the ground using thrusters and a scry crane. If you haven't seen the rover land, it was awesome. There was this thruster thing came down and all of a sudden the rover came out and it came and it, oh, it was cool. Check out the video. I have to link that one up too. There's so many neat things when it comes to these rovers that uh, a lot of people joke around and we say on my videos that they're not on Mars. They're probably in the desert of Arizona and I would be so disappointed disappointed if that was the case um, okay but this is another couple interesting things about this rover because that's what we're here for talk about the rover each of the rover's six wheels can walk independently like feet allow so they can actually walk it allows it to overcome obstacles but engineers in the desert discovered that this also dislodges rocks then it tips them up onto their end and can pose a risk to the vehicle so I guess what they're happening is as it's walking it's tipping over some rocks and it's causing issues when it goes to put it back down um, they are now planning to include navigation protocols that will help the vehicle avoid such situations when on Mars. And that's really what these tests are for. Um, so this thing's getting, you know, it's in the final stages. For a 2018 launch, they're really the next two, three years going to be very crucial to getting that thing up there on time. Uh, that's the the launch window actually has to get done. I know it's got, it's only a certain amount of time if, or we're going to miss the launch window. It's going to be, I think it was another five or six years. Um, the rover itself will not break any speed records, of course not, traveling just a few feet per minute. Ooh, that'd be a slow one. Perched on top of the rover are two cameras, which make it look like a little bit like the Disney character Wally. These allow the rover to build up three-dimensional pictures of its surroundings, allowing the vehicle to identify obstacles and plot a safe route through. Well, that's pretty neat. So basically, it's going to be getting a lot more 3D, I think, than the Curiosity. Or Curiosity can put together some neat 3D ones. But it sounds like this will be a little bit more on the fly and, and available on the computer there for the rover to actually analyze the data itself without needing the uh, outside human intervention of it. Uh, the cameras will also allow the rover to identify potentially interesting objects that scientists may want to take a closer look at. 
I wonder how it does that. The rover is also fitted with an anonymous, auto anonymous nav. It's got auto, auto navs on it, um, allowing it to guide itself through the Martian landscape between waypoints, send to the control center back on Earth. And that's basically what they do. The waypoints are neat. When you set up like Curiosity now, it goes from one point to the next, the waypoints. And that's where you stop for the night or stop for the mission and do some work there and then go to your next point. Um, so it sounds like this thing can pretty much be set up like Curiosity. You hit the auto nav and go when it's out there. So this field trials about optimizing the use of typical instruments and the equipment aboard the Mars rover and generating a set of commands for the road to, rover to execute the following day. So yeah, so basically it's the same thing. They get the commands ready, they stick them in, they program it, and the next day it'll do it and see how it works out. Unlike satellites, planetary rovers operate in close interaction with the topography and physical properties of the planetary surface. This implies limited data return from the rover during relatively short communication windows with an inherent time delay. Um, so that's pretty much it. They're just getting more and more into this rover and what it's going to be, where it's going out. To th I can't wait. I wish the pictures were downloading right now. You know, I wish this was pictures on Mars. I believe that that's more like what, probably what Mars looks like when you're standing there on Mars. You probably got the blue skies. And I say this because every time I pull up one of these Mars pictures, and, and you've watched all my videos 100,000 times, I hit the auto levels. It drops out that nasty color down here that seems to be like just filtered in on everything. Um, the sky turns that color. Not that deep blue right there, but it turns to be blue. Um, but anyway, much love, guys. This is What's Up in the Sky 37. Just keeping you up with any of the cool space rover news. I like um, ISON stuff. There's a couple more ISON stuff going on. Man, they don't know what this thing's going to do. And now all the geeks are going at it. They're like, no, it's going to come through. It's not. We're just going to sit back and relax and see what happens. Much love, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for enjoying the channel. Uh, I meant to make this like a two minute video. Sorry I went long. I wanted to read it for you guys. I figure if you come, you guys could read anyway. But if you want to sit back while you're driving or you want to, you know, listen to something, why not have somebody fumble through it like me? <laughs> Take care. Much love.